86% of the people that have a smartphone, the first thing they do when they wake up is they do their WhatsApp, their text, their Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, then they do their Instagram, you know, take a picture of their cat, you know, and then they link in and they check one email, the other email, they check the news, and now they're their they're, they're attention on and everything known in their life, they reaffirm their identity, and then they go through all those routine behaviors. 95% of them, they're not even present and conscious, or they're, they're remembering their problems in their past. That's how they start their day. What do most people do when they wake up in the morning now? What do you do? Admit it. You go to your cell phone and you go, ah, oh my gosh, Monica's eating carbohydrates again. <gasps> Oh, look, my boyfriend from high school Facebooked me. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, look, there's a war in Syria. <clears throat> Everybody goes to their device to plug them in. But what if you woke up in the morning and you said this? What is the greatest expression of myself that I can present to the world today? What if you said, I'm not going to be guilty anymore. I'm done. I'm not going to be unworthy. Those are the emotions, behaviors, and thoughts that are connected to the old self. Do you know that if you woke up in the morning, and then you said, who do I want to be when I open my eyes? What thoughts do I want to think? What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? Let me plan my behaviors today. I'm going to leave my sadness and pain behind, and I'm going to open my heart, and I'm going to feel gratitude. I'm going to feel joy. I'm going to feel inspiration. Your job is to maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day. And if you're able to maintain that modified state of mind and body every single day, get ready because something unusual is going to happen in your life. It's the law. You are going to run into a new opportunity because you're in a new state of being. And that's what we teach people, to rehearse the future and to take the brain out of the past and put it in the future. Take the body out of the past and put it in the future. But if you get up every single day feeling the same way and you wake up and you go, oh my God, who's that? Oh, God. Wait, let me remember my problems. Ugh. You just return back to the old self. So the act of planning your behaviors, the research shows that as you begin to plan what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, you begin to change your brain to look like the event has already occurred. And you begin to prime your brain into the future and out of the past. And if you can create the emotion... You are more prone to get your behaviors to match your intentions, your actions equal to your thoughts, and your mind and body working together, and you will begin to arrive at a new destiny. We've seen it over and over and over again. What is the simple definition of quantum? Quantum physics says that your mind and matter are so in intimately connected that it's impossible to separate the two. That matter has a mind, and mind is in matter. And you can't pull them apart. And so in quantum physics, it's amazing because when they started studying the very, very tiny particles in atoms, like electrons and photons, they expected that those particles would behave like planets rotating around the sun. Predictably, but they don't. They respond to mind. And so now, all of a sudden, the quantum physicist comes along to measure the electron. And the electron goes from a wave of possibility, and all that energy collapses into a particle, and it's called collapsing the wave function. They turn their back and no longer look and observe the electron, and it turns back into energy. So mind is affecting matter. So, in other words, if you wake up every morning and you do the same thing all every, that you've been doing for the last 10 years, 
then you're caught in the predictable world of Newtonian physics. And if you're doing the same thing over and over again, we can take your past and lift it up and set it on your future, and it's going to be exactly the same. So then if you're viewing your life from the same level of mind every single day, then you are collapsing the same possibilities into the same reality. So if you teach people then to find the present moment, in quantum physics, all possibilities exist in the present moment. But most people's brains are anticipating the future based on the past, and they're not present. So then it requires training and practicing finding the present moment and beginning to change their habits and their thoughts and their behaviors. Most people don't know this, but there's an invisible field of energy around your body. And when you react to someone or something, you draw from this invisible field and you turn it into chemistry. And the field around your body shrinks. And now you're more matter and less energy. You're more particle and less wave. And most people then, when you are matter trying to change matter, you always try to force the outcome. You try to control the outcome. You try to predict the outcome. And people then get competitive or they hold on or they manipulate or they cheat or they steal because that's the only way they can get what they want. But the quantum model of reality, when you are truly in the present moment, when a person begins to open their heart and they can begin to sustain an elevated emotion, they begin to broaden the magnetic field around their body to nine meters wide. Now they're more energy than matter. They're more wave than particle. And they can exert better effects on reality. So then think of when you open your heart, this is science, like dropping a pebble in water. You produce a ripple. If you drop a bigger stone, you produce a bigger ripple. If you're able to sustain that state, you keep dropping the same rock over and over again, and you broadcast a signature into the field. The emotion is the magnetic charge. Your intention, your thought, is the information that's carried on that wave. And when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you begin to produce an effect on matter. You see, the thoughts that you think are the electrical charge in the quantum field. The feelings that you emote are the magnetic charge in the quantum field. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out, and the feeling draws the event back. So if you're walking around your life feeling sorry for yourself and feeling like a victim, you are broadcasting that signature into the field, and you will create more experiences to suffer because we are not punished for our sins. We are punished by our sins, and sin is an attitude. And sin is how you think and how you feel. So then when you cause people to give up their guilt and their shame and their unworthiness and teach them how to open their heart and create coherent waves in their brain and in their heart, they are going to produce the miraculous. It takes training. And it takes practice. And it takes learning new information and deprogramming ourselves into believing that we're limited. But if you're living by the hormones of stress and you have no energy, no field, then you can't produce an effect on matter. So then, life is about the management of energy. And where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And if your attention is on the knowns and in the predictable future, or your attention is on the familiar emotions of the past, you are siphoning energy out of the present moment and you have no energy to create with. And when you're able to do this and practice it really well, you will begin to do what's innately your birthright, and that is to create an unknown or wonderful experience in your life. 
So it just takes practice in order to do it.